know that you can read that. It says, coffee gets me started. God keeps me going. Got Craig's. Looking for a kibble on the ground. I'm out wearing my uh, dog walking outfit. Thought I'd do a little little video here for you guys. Um, you know, kind of funny to say, by the time you see this, I'll be gone. It depends actually when you see this, but we're going... We're going to the Holy Land, as you guys know. We're praying for you guys. We're praying for you guys on the Mount of Beatitudes. And you're going to hear Beatitudes this weekend. We're going to pray for you guys uh, at St. Martha's, um, which is right near Jerusalem. We'll get to go to Lazarus' tomb uh, on the Sea of Galilee. All you guys, my parish, my people up in Alaska, and all you guys online will be in our prayers. Because Catholics, we don't go on pilgrimage by ourselves. Like a, a, the Catholic thing to do, like the American Catholic thing to do. <laughs> <clears throat> is to do what like generally you go to the church you kneel down you say a couple hail marys and then what you do is you go to the gift shop and that's not how we go on pilgrimage we actually go to, to suffer like we don't go like our intention is not to suffer but our intention is to go and whatever we find you know difficult painful annoying we're going to just all offer that up as jesus did in his life right he he offers all that up for us and you know like a tourist or a pilgrim like they're different, they're different things, right? The, the tourist wants to see as much as they can, and people on vacation want to, I don't know, like have umbrella drinks uh, or work as priests in Alaska. <laughs> if I get to go this year, we'll see. We're running out of priests. But, um, you know, your attitude on vacation is different than it is if you're a pilgrim. You're a pilgrim, you know, you don't want to see everything there is to see. You want to see what God wants you to see. You want to dwell where God wants you to dwell. And Bradley wants to find. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have, to, I have to throw more kibble. <laughs> this, this is what we do. Craig. Find it. Oh, she's going after the squirrel. Anyway, so <laughs> back to the plot. Um, you know, pilgrims want to see what God wants them to see. And this week, uh, when you hear the Beatitudes, you know, how do I say this? So the Jews are God's people. And they still are God's people. One of the things that I love when I get to go to Israel is certainly you're in the land that, that Jesus walked in, right? You get to see the mountains that he saw. And it looks the same. Like the, I mean, maybe the mountains have worn down a little bit in a couple thousand years, but otherwise it looks the same. The Sea of Galilee is where the Sea of Galilee is, although it's not as high. It's a lot lower now. Um, but these are God's people, and I think that, like, man, you know, and they know it, right? The, the Jews are God's people, and they still are. And John Paul II teaches that the covenant that God gave the Jews still stands. It has spiritual fecundity. We believe they are his people today. He loves them, you know. We like to joke in my family that, well, it's not a joke. Like, my mom has a favorite. We all know who that favorite is, and he knows. And it's not me. It's my oldest brother. <laughs> and one day we were playing video games as a kid, and it was dinner time. And my mom, you know, she, like, would ring this bell, and then my father would say, Supper time, dinner time. I use that for Cragley. So I was checking on her to see if she was coming in. And um, we're like, Tim, my brother Tim is my oldest. And we're like, Tim, we got to go. It's supper time. And I, and Tim is still playing this video game. And he goes, Mama, forgive me. I'm her favorite. <laughs> he called it. You're not allowed to call it. He called it. Anyway, the Jews are God's people. And he loves them. And it's so cool to walk among them. But we don't see the world as the Jews see it. Right? So the Jews see the world differently than, well, than the non-Jewish world. And so for the Jews, they saw the world through the scriptures, right? So, hand, hand, hand the phone off here. So, what does that mean? They saw the world through the You see, my screen door was raining the other day, so I put that door up so I don't get rain in, get rain in the rectory. Um, so when, when they see a guy go up a mountain, do they see a man go up a mountain? Yes or no? Say yes. Right? Yes. But in addition to seeing a guy go up a mountain, because they see the world biblically, let me throw another piece of kibble at Cragley. Find a Cragley. Find it. They don't just see the, a guy go up the mountain. They think of Moses. Because Moses goes up the mountain. He comes down and he gives them the 15, the 10 commandments, for those who know the history of the world. And he gives them the 10 commandments, God's law. So when Jesus goes up the mountain in the gospel that you're going to hear this weekend, and he gives them the Beatitudes, like the Jews are thinking, wait a minute, here's a rabbi, here's a righteous man, here's a teacher of the law who is giving us a new law. Like they're going to hear that. And it's going to sound different than anything they've heard before. 
Get my Blue Jays. Hold on. My squirrels and my Blue Jays. Well, they're not my Blue Jays. They're God's Blue Jays, and I love them. My squirrels are fighting and flirting, just like people. <laughs> anyway, um, what I want to communicate is something cool that I never saw before, never thought about before until I was over in Israel. I think it was the second time. So we saw a bunch of shepherds over there. Of course you do. Um, and it was really neat to see the shepherds walking because it's, it's not what I imagine. I don't even really know what I imagine. I guess I imagine something like from Ireland. Uh, like pictures of Ireland. I haven't been to Ireland yet. Hope to get over there, see some of you guys, and pray over there. Let's throw another piece of kibble to Craggy. Find it, Craggy. Go, go find it. Find it. Um, so the shepherd is walking in the front of a flock of sheep. Of course he is. But he's walking, and, and he has all these sheep. It's like an inverted triangle with the wide angle, like the, the base of the triangle, like right near him. And my squirrels. <laughs> they don't want to be on camera, I guess. And uh, all the sheep are like right next to him, almost like if I have like treats in my hands and, and crags or pizza crust in my hands. I gotta say that carefully. And like crags would be walking right next to me because she wants that pizza crust or a, a little piece of banana. And then the flock gets thinner and thinner and thinner and all the way to the back. And at the back of the line, at the back of the line, what is there is a little boy who's running after the sheep, and he's got a stick, he's got like a, a rod in his hand. And what is that for? Well, one, it's to fight off anybody trying to steal a sheep from the end of the line. But particularly when those little sheep, when the sheep at the end start to get distracted by the, the kibble, by the, the grass, uh, where they're not supposed to be going, he runs after them to hit them. And then they scoot their little butt and get back in line. So the ones at the front are, are like happy because they're right near the shepherd, and the ones in the back have a tendency to go astray, and the rod is keeping them there. And this made me think of a, a psalm. It kind of opened up one of the psalms that I never had thought of before, where it says, Thy rod and thy staff give me courage. Right, Psalm 23, everyone knows that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside rest of waters he leads me. Right, it's a, you know, do I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. And this is what it's talking about, right? Here in Jersey, particularly at the Jersey Shore, that's a nice shot of the squirrel. I don't know if you can see him up there eating his, his peanuts. I put peanuts out for him. <laughs> squirrel, I get distracted myself. But thy rod and thy staff to give me courage. Here, they, people like to think of like the fishing rod. That's not what it is. It's the shepherd's staff in the front of the line, and then the rod of like the caboose, the, the driver of the caboose, right? Like the, on a fire a fire engine, the person in the rear, and that's the, you know, the little boy with the rod. And between, if you are in Jesus's flock, if you stay between those two, between the staff and the rod, you're safe. The shepherd's got you. He's going to fight off anything that's going to harm you, and he's going to lead you to a place where he wants, right? And God knows where he wants to lead you. And he wants to lead his people, still today, the Jewish people whom he loves, closer to him, and he wants to lead us closer to him. How this relates to the Beatitudes is the commandments that Moses gave when he went and sat on the mountain is like the rod, thou shalt not kill, right? Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath, thou shalt not take God's name in vain, right? That's like the rod, that's the like the back end. You have to keep the commandments. But that rich guy, the rich young man says, Jesus, you know, master, what do I have to do to enter into life? And he says, keep the commandments. That's the end, right? Like that's the end of the line, the caboose. The front of the line is what you're going to hear this week in the Beatitudes, and there's a whole area between them, right? Like they're like the boundary markers, like the play. You got to make the catch, and you got to be between the out of bounds. They got to be inbounds, right? So the boundaries are, thou shall not kill. And then the front of that line is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will, you know, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy, right? Uh, you have the commandment, thou shall not commit adultery. Right? What's the front of that line? That's the back of the line, right? So as God taught, right, you have to be. Pet my girl here. Like God teaches virginity before marriage, and then faithfulness to your spouse within marriage, right? And, and no cheating. So that's the back of the line. What's the front of the line? Blessed are the pure of heart; they will see God, right? Um, think of if you think of the saints; they're the ones who like live these out and push like sheep to the very front of the line. So Saint Francis, right? He was from a rich family, and he gave up his riches in the textile industry to become poor, right? 
the blessed are the poor they shall be you know the kingdom of heaven is theirs um saint benedict gave away his his home and his land and his estates he made sure his sister was cared for but then he went to live radically trusting in god not having a place of his own right blessed are the meek they shall inherit the land sorry my girl sitting next to me so I would not have known thy rod and thy staff to give me courage unless I saw this shepherd walking with his sheep in between those two, you know, in, and all the sheep walking between the two. And when you think of Jesus teaching on the mountain, the Beatitudes, that's the front of the line and the commandments are the back of the line. So where are you in the middle of that flock, right? Are you breaking the commandments? If so, get the confession, get your butt back in line. Um, and are you, are, are you walking towards the front of any one of those Beatitudes? Which one would you make yours? If you had the, if you had to say, like, I want to be on this line, imagine like, like eight paths, and which one would you walk on, to be the front? You know, I mean, I personally, I like nature a lot, uh, as you guys know. I like being outdoors with my girl. I like, she's watching all these squirrels come down for their, the food I put out for them. Well, if I love the land, you know, in heaven, I'd love to have a bunch of land with Cragley, you know, another dog that I lost, and to see some of you guys, like a little cabin in heaven. I think that'd be awesome. Well, if I want some land up there, then then what does that mean? Well, I gotta be meek here. Right? I gotta be forgiving. I gotta be loving. And that's that's where I want to walk. So we're praying for you guys as we walk over in the Holy Land. If we see shepherds, I'm gonna think about you guys. But I'd like you guys to think about, hey, where are you? Are you between the commandments and the beatitudes? And which ones do you want to live? God bless you. The last piece I'd put in here about the Holy Land is there's a lot of people that want to go, you know, but they're like, they're afraid. They're afraid because of like tensions in the Middle East or they're scared of going on a long plane ride. I always say go to confession before you get on any long plane flight, really before any plane flight, go to confession. And if the plane's going down, I mean, one, I guess bring a priest with you because if the plane's going down, we can give general absolution and you're all good. That doesn't work for us. Uh, this is why it's good as a priest to travel with a buddy. So, like, if the plane's going down or the ship's going to sink, you just face each other and you give, you know, you give absolution. But um, that's a, we'll have that conversation about that another time. But I always recommend going to confession before you get on an airplane, just to make sure you're okay. And when people say like, "Oh, Father Dave, I'm too scared to go into the Middle East," I think, well, two things. One, yeah, you could die over there because Jesus died, but he rose from the dead, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, and you know, if you go in with the, if you go and your soul's all right with God, doing you know humbly what He tells us, that's gonna be all right. And if you die, like if, if we die, well, we go to heaven. We're gonna help you out, like Saint Therese. We spend our heaven doing good on earth. So, God forbid something happen, but if it does, we're gonna help you guys out. Just like when you get to heaven, you will help everybody else out. You know, our people online, your family, you know, even your enemies. So. St. Therese said, I'll spend my heaven doing good on earth. So we do the good that we can here. But when we get there, we'll continue to help people out. God bless you guys. We'll see you.